He's going to go into the witness protection program. He's got a 6'9 on his forehead. Um, going to get caught. What is you, stupid? Takashi 6 9 is in a lot of trouble between going to prison and reducing his sentence by ratting people out and going into witness protection. And in this video, we're going to be talking about how when being cool goes terribly wrong. What is up everybody? This is Chris from The Rewired Soul, where we talk about the problem, but focus on the solution. And if you're new to my channel, my channel is all about mental health. And what I like to do is pull different topics from the YouTube community or pop culture in general to try to teach you how to improve your mental and emotional well-being. So if you're into that stuff, make sure you subscribe and ring that notification bell. So yeah, the topic today is not just Takashi 69, but it's about our need to be accepted by other people and what we'll do and how that can, you know, hurt us. And Takashi 69 is a prime example right now, especially because he was such a large influence to the younger generation. How about the f Tenkashi plus nine was is now he's not going to go to jail. That's f amazing because he's a f snitch and he's going to go into witness protecting protection. He's going to go into the witness protection program. Hey, gonna get shot immediately. He's got a six nine on his forehead. Um, he's got the saw guy on the tricycle on his cheek. So those of you who are like me and you didn't know who Takashi six nine was, let me break it down for you um, <laughs> as best as I can. So, anyways, he he was a rapper who like rose, rose to fame pretty pretty quickly. I don't know if he started out on SoundCloud or what, but he got pretty popular, all right? And he's done collaborations with people like Nicki Minaj and some other people. And like, he's he's from, I believe, New York, and like, he's been gang affiliated and all these other things. But anyways, there, there were some charges like brought up against him about possible, you know, um, sexual misconduct with like a minor and everything like that. But recently, as of a few months ago, he was charged with things like racketeering and all these other things, right? And he was facing a lot of jail time. Well, most recently it came out that he is ratting out people to reduce his sentence and they're gonna send him into witness protection program. But anyways, I don't know if you guys watch uh, Chris Delia, but his talks about Takashi 69 on his podcast are absolutely hilarious. Between the way he purposely mispronounces his name to his impressions of him. Tenkashi plus nine was Tapalashi Samfine, Sapachi Fambine. Takashi six nine and Takushi six nine. Senkashi six nine. Takanchi? Kaplanchi? Kaplachi Samfine. Carp Blanche and 75. Why are you so mad? Kompluchi tight sign. Tenkamchi six nibins. Oh yeah, it's Takashi Seps nine. But anyways, witness protection is not gonna go for very well for Takashi six nine. But as I've gotten older and I look back at like my days of like my addiction and even high school and things like that, like I can, I can relate to Takashi 69. I think all of us can just maybe not to that extent, right? Like what are we willing to do to look cool or fit in? Like if I look back to like my childhood, I think it was like middle school when my friends like pressured me into like smoking a cigarette and I did it cause I wanted to be cool with them. Um, back in high school when I tried pot for the first time, I did it cause I wanted to look cool. But I also remember just walking around like trying to act cool. And this is a problem that a lot of men face too. Like try not to show your feelings or emotions cause you want to look like the tough guy, right? And so much of what we do is based on how we want others to perceive us, right? And depending on which crowd we wanna go in. And this is an issue that a lot of people struggle with when they lack a sense of self. Like, I, I talk about how I used to be like a social chameleon, and I know a lot of people have struggled with this, where we change depending on who we're with, right? So like, for example, I, I played sports in high school, so when I was with the jocks, I could be a jock. But anyways, I was also like a computer nerd, so I could hang out with the computer geeks. I was also uh, a gamer, so I could hang out with the kids who love video games. You know, I was into like, you know, certain types of music, so I could hang out with like the emo kids or, you know, the, the goth kids or whatever it was, and I was constantly changing and losing my sense of self. And for the most part, me losing my sense of self and trying to be cool and trying to fit in, like all it did was cause me more pain and harm. Like that's one of the things that like was really detrimental to my mental health. And then like what happens is when we're not accepted by other people, 
it makes us feel even worse, right? And like, we have to ask ourselves, like, what are we willing to do? Like, how far are we willing to go just to be accepted by other people? What's wrong, man? Nobody's gonna learn too. There's gonna be another rapper that just does the same shit. Uh, it's kind of, it's, I guess it's sad. At what point is it not sad anymore? And then it's just like you're doing it to yourself. A lot of guys have had fucked up lives and you still, you make it, dude. And you're on the straight and narrow. But this guy, dude. So I actually see this or saw this come up a lot at, you know, the rehab I was working at for, you know, a few years. Like, and I would do groups with people and in every single group, like, Rehab, <laughs> rehab is kind of like high school, all right? So you have like kids who, who are paying attention and, you know, really studying and taking notes. And you have like the, the class clowns and you have the cool kids, you have the disruptive ones and all that, you know? And I, I can definitely relate to obviously working in a rehab center because I'm a recovering addict. But like sometimes I had to give them some real talk, especially on days when I would get phone calls and somebody passed away from an overdose or whatever. But you would have the cool kids in treatment, right? The ones who were just acting cool the entire time. I'm just like way too cool for this treatment thing. And when it comes to, you know, addiction, like this is a life or death situation. And I would constantly remind him that. Like something I would always tell him is like, I was like, you need to quit focusing on how cool you look to a bunch of other people in rehab, because just to let you know, when you get out of here, we don't have a yearbook and write down like coolest person in rehab. That's not how this thing works. It is life or death. But I saw this happen many, many, many times with people in rehab as well, where they would like act super cool the whole time, or they would joke around and mess around, not pay attention to anything, or they'd be like flirting with the girls, or the girls would be flirting with the guys, or you know, whatever it was, and they would completely neglect everything happening in treatment. And not only would you uh, see a high rate of relapse after they left, but you would see them doing things in the name of being cool while they're in there, like sneaking in drugs, right? Um, <laughs> tormenting their therapist and all sorts of things. And then they would get kicked out and then they would be begging to come back into treatment. And I just, you know, I would sit there and think because like as a recovering addict and someone who's, you know, working on, you know, depression and anxiety and, you know, my childhood issues and all these things on a regular basis, I have to learn from these people too. I'm like, how much am I willing to sacrifice just so some other people think I look cool, right? And we're seeing it with Takashi 6 9 Like, this is something that, you know, you see a lot just in kind of like, you know, street life and things like that. Like, you need to, like, a lot of people do it as a survival instinct. Like, you need to find a group to fit in with, right? Whether it's, you know, so you feel safe or you so, so you feel protected or whatever. But that's what also makes it very difficult for people to detach from that because they're afraid of what, other people are gonna think or how they're gonna be perceived or whatever. But with Takashi 69, you see this like to an extreme. Like I remember watching Takashi 69, I'm like, really dude, like really, you look really cool. But like, what's this doing to your life, you know? And what's what's this doing to your child? What's this doing to other people? What's this doing to your family? Because something that he's dealing with right now is going into witness protection. He has to worry about his family. He has to worry about his child. Like I think his son's uh, or his child's mom, I, I don't know if he has a son or a daughter. She came out and she talked about how like, she she's scared now based on what he's done. So I really want you to sit back and think about that. Like, are you, are you trying to look or act a certain way? And how is that affecting you? How is that affecting your mental health? You know what I mean? Because for me, what I eventually had to do was learn who I was, learn what, you know, these values, these morals, and who I wanted to be in life was, and then the rest of it didn't matter. You know what I mean? Like, that's not to say, you know, like when I get, you know, a new job or I meet new people or whatever, like I'm not gonna try to befriend them and fit in with them and all those other things. But I have to work on like, you know, not, not trying, like overly trying because that can affect my mental health, which then in turn affects my sobriety, you know? And I think this is something that naturally comes along with age. You know what I mean? That's why when you see like older people, like, like older people like retired and stuff like that, like they just stop caring. They just literally stop caring about what anybody thinks about them and think, think about that freedom you have. You know what I mean? But anyways, we can have a conversation down in the comments below. Like, let me know if, if you trying to fit in has affected your mental health, all right? But anyways, that's all I got for this video. I'm in uh, Florida right now for Playlist Live, so if you're not following me on social media, make sure you follow me on Instagram and Twitter at The Rewired Soul. 
I'm gonna be hanging out with a bunch of people doing a bunch of cool stuff. So make sure you follow me on the social media, all right? Anyways, if you like this video, please give it a thumbs up. If you are new, make sure you subscribe and ring that notification bell. And a huge, huge thank you to everybody supporting the channel over on Patreon. You are all amazing. And if you would like to become a patron and get some exclusive content like extra videos, free books, be part of the Q&A, click or tap right there, all right? Thanks so much for watching. I'll see you next time.